Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. Now, this Monday we're going to be looking at the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Um, so we'll look at the effect of skipping breakfast on weight loss, body composition, and just general health. Um, so first, where did the idea that breakfast is the most important meal come from? Uh, well, Good Health magazine uh, published an article in 1917 arguing outright that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and it shouldn't be eaten hurriedly and all the family should partake of it together. Of course. No actual scientific evidence was given to suggest why it might be so important, uh, but given that John Harvey Kellogg, the inventor of cornflakes, was an editor for Good Health at the time, probably had a lot to do with getting this idea out to the general public. Plus, I think in the absence of evidence, it does seem like a pretty logical stance to take. Um, as the argument goes, you want to eat food first thing in the morning to sort of get the nutrients and energy that your body needs to get your day started off right. Uh, but before we test this hypothesis against actual peer-reviewed scientific literature, I think it's important to first clarify exactly what we mean by breakfast. Um, so literally speaking, breakfast simply means to break a fast. So technically speaking, whenever your first meal of the day is, uh, that would be your breakfast. Uh, but I don't think this is a very practical definition. Um, so we're going to use the definition established by Betts and colleagues in 2016 and just count breakfast as any meal containing at least 50 calories eaten within two hours of waking. And I think a good place to start in answering this question is with a 2014 study from Betts and colleagues where they investigated the effect of skipping breakfast on metabolism. And as you can see here in the graph, there is no difference in resting metabolic rate between the groups. This kind of puts to rest the myth that eating breakfast sort of stokes the metabolic furnace and gets your metabolism running for the day. Uh, and because diet-induced thermogenesis occupies such a small sliver of total daily energy expenditure, uh, the differences here aren't likely to be significant. Um, however, just notice the gap in physical activity thermogenesis. As it turns out, the breakfast skipping group burns significantly less calories through physical activity. And this has been described in other research as a sort of compensatory feedback mechanism where the body tries to defend against a perceived energy deficit from the fasting, or from breakfast skipping by reducing physical activity. Uh, so since breakfast eaters tend to burn more calories through physical activity, uh, on the face of it, this really does seem like a point for eating breakfast and a strike against uh, fasting, and it might be. Uh, but remember that this only covers the energy outside of the equation. We also need to look at what happens on the energy inside uh, when you skip breakfast. Um, so in other words, does skipping breakfast cause you to overeat later in the day? Um, and the simple answer to this is yes, uh, but not enough to offset the deficit from actually skipping breakfast. And um, this same study from Betts et al. showed that when subjects skipped a 700 calorie breakfast, they only overate throughout the rest of the day by 161 calories on average. Um, so the skippers still ended up eating 539 calories less than the folks eating the full breakfast. Um, so now it seems like this is really a point scored for the breakfast skippers, um, but you need to remember that while breakfast skippers do tend to eat fewer calories, uh, they also tend to burn fewer calories. Uh, so on balance, there actually isn't all that much difference between breakfast skipping and breakfast eating. And this led the authors to conclude later that taken collectively, these observations begin to explain why a resolution to start skipping breakfast may not predict the degree of weight loss one might expect. And as a practical takeaway for weight loss, uh, I think that your decision to eat or skip breakfast should be tailored to your specific needs. Um, from my own coaching perspective, I've noticed that some people will wake up with a really huge appetite. And in that case, I think eating breakfast would make sense to sort of set your hunger at bay. Well, being careful to moderate your caloric intake throughout the rest of the day. Um, others, myself included, find their appetite is actually quite low first thing in the morning, uh, but then picks up throughout the course of the day. And in that case, I think it also makes sense to sort of work with your body and coordinate the spacing of your meals in accordance with your own hunger patterns by sort of skewing your caloric intake to be predominantly later in the day. Um, ultimately, for weight loss, it should be no surprise for regular viewers of this channel and this series uh, that net energy balance is ultimately what's driving net fat balance. Um, so from a dieting perspective, you should be eating according to a meal schedule that allows you to adhere to and maintain a caloric deficit the best. Um, but that is just simple weight loss, after all. Uh, what about muscle mass and body composition. Uh, well, in this case, there are two potential concerns that I think I'd have. Uh, while some folks really do seem to perform well in the gym while fasted, 
Uh, in my coaching experience, I would say that more people are stronger and more fatigue resistance when they've eaten some sort of pre-workout meal. Um, and as mentioned in the BETS review, if your morning will involve physical exercise, with performance on that day being a priority, then consuming a carbohydrate-rich breakfast is the most important meal. However, if you train later in the day or find training fasted works well for you, uh, then breakfast is obviously gonna be of much less importance. Also, I'd say from a hypertrophy perspective, uh, skipping breakfast might not be the most optimal thing. I think we just need more data on this to know for sure. Uh, but based on muscle protein synthetic research, it does seem that having four or five meals per day with at least 20 grams of protein in each meal is best. Of course, if you say delay breakfast only until noon um, and then have your last meal just before bed, uh, you can easily still get those four or five meals in. Uh, but if you begin to delay breakfast further and further, sort of narrowing that eating window more and more, I think you do increase your risk of missing your sort of maximum potential for stimulating muscle protein synthesis. And granted, this is a developing area of research and there's a lot to cover here. Um, so I'd recommend listening to my interview with protein researcher Jorn Trommelin uh, for more on that. Uh, but I think the bottom line is that from a muscle building perspective, uh, extreme delays in that first meal may not be the most optimal, uh, but as long as total daily protein intake is sufficient, so say 0.8 to one grams of protein per pound, uh, how you space that out probably has no measurable impact. And when it comes to general health, I think as we'd expect, uh, there doesn't seem to be a clear answer on whether skipping breakfast is better or worse than eating breakfast. We do know that epidemiological correlational research has consistently associated infrequent breakfast consumption with increased risk of adiposity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Uh, but correlation doesn't imply causation, and habitual breakfast consumers also tend to be non-smokers, consume less fat and alcohol, uh, eat more fiber and micronutrients, and are also more physically active. Uh, so it remains to be established whether daily breakfast is a cause, an effect, or simply a marker of a healthy lifestyle. Um, I'd also imagine that it's possible that skipping breakfast could result in a lower intake of certain micronutrients, vitamins, and minerals uh, if they aren't consumed later in the day. Uh, but assuming that nutrient intake is the same, uh, I'm of the opinion that the health effects of skipping breakfast probably don't extend very far in either direction, either negative or positive. Um, as a quick aside, I don't think I'd recommend that children or growing adolescents intentionally skip breakfast or any meal proper for that matter. And this is a recommendation mirrored by the Canadian Pediatric Society, which discourages teenagers from fasting and skipping meals. And this is, as I see it, to promote a healthy body image and encourage a diet that focuses on the inclusion of nutrient-rich foods rather than the elimination of certain foods or meals or meal times. Uh, but with that exception aside, I think the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day is busted. Um, as a whole, the research seems to indicate that there's no difference in weight change between breakfast eaters and breakfast skippers. And there hasn't been any really convincing evidence of any metabolic or health effects documented in the literature from eating breakfast. And research that does show evidence of reduced risk of diseases as confounded by other variables like subjects being more physically active and not smoking. And while I think the extreme delay of that first meal may not be the most optimal thing from a muscle protein synthetic perspective, I don't think it's practically significant as long as total daily protein intake is sufficient. Um, so to conclude, I would say that whether or not you decide to eat breakfast should be based on your own appetite, uh, your schedule, and basically just what allows you to adhere to your diet as a whole the best and apply your best effort in the gym. Um, so that's it for this one, guys. Uh, before we go, I have to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Um, I'm launching my own new website through Squarespace this month and it's looking pretty sweet. Um, so if you guys don't know, Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform where you can custom create your own website. And they have really aesthetic designer templates and 24-hour customer service, which I found to be pretty helpful in getting my new site up and running. Um, so if you guys would like to get started with making your own website or running your own online store, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered, and that'll save you 10% off your first purchase. So thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring the video. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you happen to be new. Um, I've got a new vlog on the way here next Monday, and then I'll be back here again uh, with another Mythbust Monday video on June 25th. Um, so I'll see you guys all then.